Genshin Impact is a wondrous game with an ever-growing world and stylish art design is able to capture the imagination of players. Whether you enjoy the world, story or gameplay, one aspect that will keep players coming back to the game are the amazing characters. So I'm Dartblade with a character guide to Yunjin in Genshin Impact. In this guide we will briefly cover the basic lore of the character, their moves and abilities, weapon options, stat priorities and artifact builds. Remember though that these guides are mainly aimed at free to play and low spender players, so the guides will feature the characters as if they were mainly constellation level 0 with 4 star weaponry, however there may be one or two exceptions to this. Yunjin is a 4 star character who wields a geovision and a polearm. However, to get the character, currently you have to wish for her on banners, but there is a chance she may be available in the shop later on down the line. Yunjin is a renowned Liyue opera singer, who is not only skilled when it comes to singing, but also when it comes to playwriting as well. Thanks to her passion for opera, she goes to great many lengths to ensure that everyone who watches her performances leaves satisfied. During performances, Yunjin is graceful and very elegant, but behind the scenes, she is exceedingly friendly allowing her to bond with people. For her operas, she draws inspiration from many sources, which is where she learned to use the polearm. Yunjin is so dedicated to the opera craft that it ultimately allowed her to receive a geovision. But despite enjoying her passion as much as she does, she can get burned out from time to time, to which she finds comfort in Xinyan and her non-traditional music. But unfortunately, this needs to be kept a secret, as Yunjin's elders would probably disapprove of their friendship. Regardless though, Yunjin is a dedicated performer and artist who excels at perfection in everything she does. Now every character in Genshin Impact has access to various talents. These are divided into combat talents and passive talents. Combat talents are your moves and abilities that you perform whilst in a fight, and passive talents are mechanics that work in the background of a character. When it comes to Yunjin, her first combat talent is her normal attacks, Cloud, Graze and Strike. When pressing the attack button, Yunjin will perform a 5 hit combo with her spear. Alternatively, you can hold down the attack button to perform a charged attack, which will consume a small amount of stamina to cause Yunjin to lunge forward at opponents, knocking back weaker foes. Finally, she has access to a plunging attack, which is performed by pressing the attack button whilst in mid-air, which will cause Yunjin to plummet towards the ground, damaging opponents in a small AoE around the impact zone. The next combat talent available to Yunjin though is Opening Flourish. This is her elemental skill and can be performed in one of two ways. You can either press the elemental skill or you can hold it. For pressing the elemental skill, Yunjin will assume a cloud grasping stance to which afterwards she will strike a small AoE around her dealing geo damage. This is quick to perform but generates less energy particles than if you hold down the elemental skill. Whilst holding down the elemental skill, you can charge up Opening Flourish. So holding the elemental skill, you'll take on the opening and flourish stance, which can be charged up to two levels. Now when charging, a shield will form around Yun Jin. This shield will absorb damage based on her maximum HP and has 150% effectiveness against all elemental damage and physical damage. The shield will last until you unleash your elemental skill or it's broken. Now regardless of if the shield breaks or you manually release your elemental skill, Yun Jin will unleash the charged energy as an attack dealing massive AoE geo damage based on the time spent charging up the ability. This also has a much wider AoE around Yunjin so it can hit opponents who are further away. It should be also noted as well that the damage done by this ability scales off of Yunjin's defense so that's something to be aware of. But it should be noted as well once you start unlocking passive talents there is a certain passive talent true to oneself which allows the tap or press version of the opening flourish elemental skill to unleash a fully charged level 2 attack for countering an opponent's attack at the right time, but we'll talk about that more in a moment. But her next combat talent is Cliffbreaker's Banner. This is Yunjin's elemental burst. When activated, Yunjin will deal AoE Geo damage and grant all party members a Flying Cloud Flag Formation buff. Now this Flying Cloud Flag Formation allows normal attacks to deal bonus damage based on Yunjin's current defense. So the more defense Yunjin has, the stronger the normal attacks will be of all your party members. So this means she works really well in unison and synergizes well with characters who utilize normal attacks as their main form of damage. The effects of this skill will be cleared after a set duration or after being triggered a specific number of times. It should also be noted when one normal attack hits multiple opponents, the effect is triggered multiple times according to the number of opponents hit. 
The number of times that this effect is triggered is counted independently for each member of the party with flying cloud flag formation. Now while this burst may seem a little bit simple, it is in fact one of the most useful elemental bursts out there in terms of a support elemental burst. The fact that it boosts the normal attack of teammates means that Yunjin can really enhance characters who specialise in dealing normal attack damage, making them even more effective. But anyway, let's move on to the passive talents. First of all is true to oneself. When using opening flourish, so your elemental skill, at the precise moment when Yunjin is attacked, you will unleash its fully charged up level 2 version for simply pressing the elemental skill. This gives Yunjin some nuance as she is able to use her elemental skill to now counter opponents and quickly unleash a hard hitting attack. Her next passive talent is breaking conventions. The normal attack damage bonus granted by the flying cloud flag formation, so your elemental burst, is further increased by either 2.5%, 5%, 7.5% or 11.5% of Yunjin's defense when the party consists of characters of different elements. So the more different types you have, increase the bonus damage your normal attacks will get when Yunjin's elemental burst is active. And then finally for the passives is light nourishment. When perfect cooking is achieved on foods with the adventure related effects, so you're normally your stamina based foods, there is a 12% chance of obtaining double the product. So a nice little addition there, as I believe she is the first character to have that effect when it comes to adventure related food. Now let's quickly move on to talk about the constellations. Now remember these guides are aimed at characters who are constellation level 0. But if you were lucky enough to get any further constellations for Yunjin, there's one that I want to briefly cover, which is Myriad Mison Sens, which is constellation level 2. After the Cliffbreaker's banner is unleashed, so your elemental burst, or nearby party members' normal attack damage is increased by 15% for 12 seconds, adding even more damage to their normal attacks and making her elemental burst an even greater support ability. So those are all the talents and constellations available to Yunjin. Let's move on to the next section where we talk about the builds that I like to use for the character. Now Yunjin's kit is mainly focused towards a support role. Whilst yes, she can do some damage with her opening flourish, her elemental skill, I nonetheless prefer to use her as more of a support, and this is reflected in the builds that I like to use for her. So the first build is the sub DPS support build. This build is all about increasing the boost provided to a team through Yunjin's elemental burst, but on top of that it has a few features that increases the damage of her elemental skill. So first of all, when it comes to the weaponry, you have a few options here. I would mainly be looking for a defense increase polearm, but alas, at the time of this video, there are none in the game. So instead, I would recommend either going for Deathmatch, which is the battle pass weapon, which gives us an increased crit rate, and on top of that, it gives us the Gladiator buff, which, if there are at least two opponents nearby, our attack and defense is increased. If there are fewer than two opponents nearby though, just your attack is increased. So you still get a little bit of a defense increase when using Deathmatch. And the crit rate, of course, is always nice. Failing that, I would recommend Energy Recharge Weaponry, which includes the Catch, which increases our Energy Recharge, and gives us the Shanty Bonus, which increases our Elemental Burst damage by 32%, and our Elemental Burst crit rate as well. An alternative would be the Favonius Lance, giving us again an Energy Recharge percentage, and on top of that, Critical Hits have a chance of generating Elemental Particles for the entire team. Finally, for the Energy Recharge Weapons, the Prototype Star Glitter is also an option, which gives us a energy recharge percentage and gives us the magic affinity buff which after using an elemental skill increases our normal and charged attack damage which can stack up to two times. Finally if you're really on a budget you can also consider the white tassel which gives us a crit rate percentage and on top of that increases our normal attack damage by 48%. But like I said if there is a defense weapon added to the game it will more than likely be the best option for Yunjin. But when it comes to the artifacts, we are going to go for four pieces of the Husk of Opulent Dreams. For wearing two pieces of the set, we'll get a defense increase of 30%, which will increase the damage of our opening flourish and increase the buff provided by our elemental burst. And for wearing four pieces of the set, we'll get access to the Curiosity mechanic, which when a character is on the field, they'll gain one stack after hitting an opponent with a Geo attack, or alternatively, when they're off the field for 3 seconds, they will gain 1 stack, which can stack up to 4 times. For each stack you'll gain a defense increase as well as a geo damage bonus as well. However, these stacks can be lost when 6 seconds pass without gaining any other additional stacks. So both these set bonuses are great for Yunjin as they increase the damage of her elemental skill and increase the bonus provided by your elemental burst to your entire 
party. Now, as for the stats on these artifacts, for your sands you want to go for defense percentage, as for your goblet you want to go for either defense percentage or geo damage, and then for your circlet you either want to go for defense percentage, crit rate or crit damage. As for the substats, defense percentage is king followed by crit rate and crit damage, and then energy recharge and flat defense. As for the talent priorities, you want to focus first on the Cliff Breaker's banner, your elemental burst, followed by opening flourish, and then your normal attacks if you wish. So this is the build I use the most on Yunjin. It's functional, it increases her damage, and allows her elemental burst to provide maximum damage increase to our party. Whilst her normal attacks may not be hitting the hardest, this build nonetheless allows her to still hit hard with her elemental skill. Which brings us on to the next build, which is the Pure Support build. This build is similar to the first build featured in this video, but features a different artifact set, the Noblesse Oblige set. I would, however, warn you that if you already have a party member who has the Noblesse Oblige set in your team, then you're better off using the first build. Nonetheless, if you want to use this build when it comes to the weaponry, it will be exactly the same as the first build, so you'll either want to go for Deathmatch or one of the energy recharge weapons, so the Catch, Favonius Lance, or the Prototype Star Glitter. When it comes to your artifacts as well, you'll want to go for four pieces of the Noblesse Oblige set. For wearing two pieces of this set, your elemental burst damage will be increased by 20%, but more importantly, for wearing four pieces of this artifact set, using an elemental burst, which you should be using quite often with this Yunjin build, it will increase all party members' attack by 20% for 12 seconds. So, not only will Yunjin's burst be providing that buff to a party's normal attack, it will also increase their attack percentage as well. When it comes to your sand, you want to go for either defense percentage or energy recharge. As for your goblet, you want to go for defense percentage or geo damage bonus. And then finally for your circlet, you want to go for either defense percentage, crit rate or crit damage. As for the substats, you want to go for defense percentage or energy recharge, as we want to be using our elemental burst as much as possible, and then followed by crit rate and crit damage or flat defense. When it comes to the talent priority, it remains the same, so you want to go for the cliff breaker banner, followed by your opening flourish, and then your normal attacks. But like I said, if you already have a party member who has the Noblesse Supplies set in your team, then you're better off using the first build featured in the video. However, if you don't, then this works really well with Yunjin as she has a relatively low cost elemental burst, which means that you can use it quite often, providing us the bonus to our normal attacks, and on top of that, grants us that increased attack percentage. Which moves us on to the third and final build for Yunjin, which is a little bit of a quirky one, which is the main DPS build. Now this build allows Yunjin to deal a decent amount of damage by increasing her normal attacks on top of the bonus provided by her elemental burst. So when it comes to the weaponry, again you'll either want to go for Deathmatch or Black Cliff Pole. Black Cliff Pole this time will provide us crit damage and after defeating an opponent it will grant us an attack increase which can stack up to 3 times. We can also take into account physical damage pole arms as well, such as the Crescent Pike or Dragon Spine Spear. Or I'd recommend once again the White Tassel. The White Tassel actually works really well for this build as we will be focusing on our normal attacks most of all. Now when it comes to the artifacts we're going for 4 pieces of the Gladiator Finale set which for wearing two pieces grants us an attack increase percentage which isn't really the most useful for Yunjin but it's still useful for this DPS build and on top of that more importantly for wearing four pieces of this artifact set we'll gain 35% damage increase to our normal attacks which when combined with the Cliff Breaker banner our elemental burst allows Yunjin's normal attacks to be quite deadly. This can be made even more effective if you're using the Superconduct Elemental Reaction in your team composition. Now as for the stats, for your sands you'll want to go for Defense Percentage, for your Goblet you'll want to go for Defense Percentage again, and then finally for your Circlet you'll want to go for Crit Rate or Crit Damage. As for the substats, go for Crit Rate or Crit Damage, followed by Defense Percentage. As for your talents, things are a little bit different here. I would first recommend going for the Cliff Breaker Banner, your Elemental Burst, followed by your Normal Attacks, and then Opening Flourish but this is a bit of a niche and quirky build. It's not gonna be for everyone, as in all honesty, I believe there are better main DPS characters out there, and I believe Yunjin works better as a support character. Nonetheless, if you want to use the opera singer in the leading role on your team, then I'd recommend this build. But no character in Genshin Impact is perfect. Everyone comes with pros and cons, regardless of if you're a five star or four star. When it comes to Yunjin, her biggest pro is her elemental burst, which increases the normal damage of all party members, which is a great support buff and can make allies who specialize in normal attacks even more deadly. 
The next pro for Yunjin is that she mainly scales off a of defense, which makes her easy to build. And then finally, her pros is that thanks to her being a Geo character, she can create crystallized reactions, granting our team and party shields. But unfortunately, there are cons to the character. The two cons that stand out for Yunjin is her elemental skill, the opening flourish. If you want to skip all the charges and immediately land that level 2 damage, you need precise timing with your counters, which can be tricky. And unfortunately, the other con is unfortunately to get the biggest buff for your elemental burst, you have to have party members of different elements in your team. But regardless, her pros more than outweigh her cons, making her a great addition to many teams. But of course, every character is enhanced and made better when they're in the right team composition. When it comes to Yunjin, there are a few things to take note of. First of all, she works best when coupled with characters who utilize normal attacks above all else. Characters such as Yoimiya, Razor, DPS, Fischl, or even Ayaka. Characters who make use of normal attacks get the most benefit for working alongside Yunjin. You also have to be mindful when it comes to Yunjin of the different elements in your team. The more variety, the stronger her elemental burst buff will be. And then finally, if you are using her as a main DPS or more of a DPSer, then you may want to consider taking an Electro character alongside a Cryo character so you can get the Superconduct Elemental Reaction increasing physical damage against opponents so her own normal attacks will deal increased damage. But overall, Yunjin is a great character, a great addition to Genshin Impact. She is both a support character and a sub DPS character. Her elemental skill can hit hard, but her elemental burst is one of the most useful aspects of the character, allowing the Opera Singer to provide massive bonus damage to the right characters. So there we have it, that is my character guide and overview to Yunjin and Genshin Impact. Now remember there are multiple ways to play and use the characters in the game, which is one of the many aspects that makes Genshin Impact so enjoyable. So at the end of the day, use the characters how you want to use them. These builds are just how I personally like to use the characters, and I hope they help you out in your adventures. So until next time, I've been Darkblade, bringing you a character guide to Yunjin in Genshin Impact. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.